All right, everybody. This is Jason over here at Go Power Sports, and we are here at another episode of Mini Biking Ain't Easy. So, of course, my name's Jason. I have producer man Zane keeping us in the lane. I got burnings on the one and twos. And today, we have a special guest. Before I introduce you, I want to tell you a little story of how I introduced you yesterday that you didn't even know. So, first off, I'll say this is Eric. With He is the go-kart god. But yesterday, before I even met you, Eric, you were talking with cars and cameras. You were showing off your awesome go-kart that we're going to talk about. And Zane goes, hey, we should go introduce ourselves. And I said, I don't know what I would even say to him. And then he walks up even closer, and he turns around with a smile on his face. I, and I'm looking at Zane like, what? He goes, he kind of has a magic mic kind of look about him. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so my head just starts running. And I'm laughing to myself, and Zane's standing there looking at you doing your go-kart, and I'm behind his ear, and I'm doing this. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> from the high heavens, we bring down to earth for one time only. Ladies, rev your engines up for go-kart guy. <laughs> and I must have done this for 30 minutes in Zane's ear. <laughs> Before we actually met you. So oh in my, my head, God. now I see you as, as a stripper, a male stripper, who comes down on a stripper pole upside down, and you are yeah. go-kart guy. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay. I'll so, take it. Yeah, so you're a full-time stripper, part-time go-karter. The, go the go-karts is a side thing. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Okay, go uh, yeah. How many? He is a stripper. That's so, what he's getting at. <laughs> yeah. <that's> what, <laughs> where do you think the money for all these go-kart builds comes from, man? Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we got Eric over here at Go Kart God, huge Instagram following. Yes. What are you at right now? We we just hit 334. And how long did it take you to get that? Started in September 21. I guess the whole Instagram thing kind of came out of the blue for me. When I started Instagram, it was really just like I want people to see the projects that I'm doing. I think it would be cool. I didn't really think it would actually. I never thought in the world that I'd try to be making go karts for a living. That sounds that sounds wild. Like that's nuts, especially that you are the go kart god. That name actually, <laughs> believe it or not, that actually came from my friend. So I'll get to that in a second. Yeah. But okay. The Instagram started by me just saying, I want to show people what I'm doing. I could care less how many people see it. But I started posting some stuff. This is in September 21. At the end of the day, uh, when I started posting, it started going well. I think we had maybe a couple thousand followers. Month one, we hit 10,000 followers. And then one of our videos went viral. We ended up getting almost 14 million views. Dang. And our Whoa. account shot up to 100,000 followers by month two. So what, what was the video? The video is me putting together a frame for one of the go-karts. I'm just putting wheels on it. Nothing special, it's just a time lapse. I'm like, I just wanted to post it for fun and then that happened and I was like, wow, this is a little bit more serious than I thought it was going to be. What do you think took it off? Tags, hashtags, or just the fact that... Well, I, what do you explain your success with? The Instagram success is... I've done a lot of marketing and social media stuff in the past. So it's really cool that once all that information came and I knew what I was doing, I was like, okay, now I can do it for me. Yeah. I knew how to post on Instagram. I think there was a few things that made it... The key to, to success was, one, it was a brand new account. So there was nothing no previous like history for the account yeah. and i think what happened was when they saw that the videos were doing well instagram will boost that account more than other accounts because it doesn't have a long history to back it up yeah. so when one of our videos went bonkers it was like this is a good account we want to continue to promote this so then like i mean we had videos regularly in the millions of views within the first three months and it was like what is going on i don't i don't i don't even know how this came so we had 100,000 by month two, and we just kept pushing for it. And now I guess I'm, I make go-karts for a living. So, <laughs> like, but you say we, but it's just you, right? It's just me. I say we because I probably wouldn't be able to do it without, you know, like, I mean, I got to meet John and, yeah. and Isaac and Charles today. And, like, I don't know. I just, I feel like I have such a great support group through my friends and my family. It's hard for me to just say me because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't, like, Cars and cameras is what kickstarted me. Nice. So to be here and meeting them is like the craziest thing to me and like I'm hanging out with them. But I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them and you know my parents have been kind of supporting me a little bit through the transition of my old income into this new yeah. business for me. I mean just them wanting to push me to continue doing it, that's like the most helpful thing. It's 
it's scary trying something new like this. Yeah. Um, but I you're super young. You can definitely take these shots right now. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm 27. I was doing professional videography for a long time, and just in the last year, I was like, this is too big for me to ignore. Mm. So I do want to put my head down. I want to work hard. I want to see what can happen. I don't know what I'm doing, but it seems to be working. So I, <laughs> I'm just gonna continue doing that, whatever that is. Okay. And I've I guess I inspire people on Instagram, and they get really excited about the build, and it's really cool to see that happen and that's that to me is why I'm doing it like I'm not here for the money I'm 100% here to help people inspire them make a difference like I, I really hope that go-kart God as a name will be the household name at some point because we've inspired enough people and, you know I mean I love to be like the cars and cameras guys like they have people coming up to like oh I love your channel like that's so cool so it's I don't know. But you're pushing something awesome. I think that philosophy of trying to make it accessible for as many people as possible, you want to make go-karts affordable. Is that your number? You feel like that's the number one motto behind Go-Kart God? Yeah, I, I mean, the goal is to inspire and educate. Yeah. And through that, if we can create products that are more affordable, it does make it more accessible. So the goal is really to, yes, I think, release products in the future that are more affordable meaning it's more accessible, meaning more people can get into the sport and have fun. And if that ends up taking a cut from my end, I would rather do that because if we can get people into the sport and having fun, that's the that's the primary goal. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's so many different ideas that I have, but right now it's getting the information out there, educating people, and I've been doing that for the last year and a half, just putting out content for free. I haven't really asked for anything much, and we got some big products coming up, which is really cool, but the focus has just been educating people and getting people, you know, stoked on go-karts, <laughs> so. So how did you get stoked on go-karts? Okay, the story of go-karts for me is, I think we all wanted to go-kart when we were a kid. Yeah. And either your dad told you it was too dangerous, my dad told me that it wouldn't be able to happen because there's cops. We're gonna get caught by the cops. Mm -hmm. That's okay, I, you know, I. I must have watched some videos in the past. Maybe I didn't correlate to cars and cameras, but I've, I've watched go-kart videos when I was a kid. And I was like, I really want to do that. It looks not that hard. And then I'm living at my own house and it's quarantine. And I'm like, I'm living here alone. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> Ordered a set of parts and had them delivered within the next month. And by, by that point, when we had the parts, I started building it. I filmed the whole first build and then that Radio Flyer is actually my second go-kart build. For real? So second. it's Big Bertha, then Radio Flyer? The Big Bertha was number three. I've oh. only built three go-karts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, go-kart god. <laughs> so I don't really know if that really account for that title, but I'm going to take it because my friend It's came a sweet up with name. That. Yeah, tell us about that name. Okay. The reason I got started was because my dad told me that I couldn't, couldn't that do it. Couldn't. I'm living on my own. <laughs> And I'm like, all right, all the parts. And then I built my first one and filmed the whole thing. I did the second one and then filmed that whole thing. And then in 2021, that's when I started posting. So there was two go-kart builds before that. I was like, I know that I could do something with this. Let me film it. So that's how I got started. And I didn't have any idea what I was doing, but I sent it, watched a bunch of their videos, cars yeah. and cameras videos, figured out how to start it and learn how to weld. I didn't know what I was doing. so. Um, Sorry about all this noise. That's okay. That's Isaac revving up the, uh, <laughs> the, lawnmower. the lawnmower. lawnmower. I think they want to go cut some grass. <laughs> I guess we didn't give these people a setting. Where are we at? This is Pates. And this is your first time? This is my Pates? first time at Pates. Is it your first time in Texas? I've been to Texas before, but this is my first time doing anything go-kart related here. What did you do back in Texas? Uh, oh. Commercial work. Okay. Commercial video work. So. so how far back does video work going for you? 2017, I picked up a camera and I started doing professional video work for you know companies all over the states. They would fly me out and I would just do video work. For, I don't know, I don't know how I got into it, but I was making decent money doing that, but it's one of those things that you trade your time for your money yeah. and it's okay, it works. I love, the, I love the work and I love doing it, but I'm getting a little tired of video editing at the moment because I've done so much of it. Yeah. So jumping into my new business, it, everything's new. So it's all it's all very exciting that I get to web development, product development, SolidWorks. Like I thrive off of new information. Yeah. So video editing to me is kind of like I don't want to say it's outdated for me, but I've done so much of it that it's like it's not. It doesn't have that same spark. Anymore. Let's move on. Yeah. It is basically I've I've conquered it. I've I've been well, successful at it. What was the first video you did? Like professionally? Yeah. Or? Do you remember what? My video career started 
when, believe it or not, it was actually not me wanting to shoot. It was, I wanted videos of myself. Okay. I was on my BMX bike when I was a kid. I would ride my BMX, BMX bike all the time and I wanted videos of me. And no one would ever film it the way that I wanted to. And that's okay, that's fine. that's fine. So I started picking up like a GoPro and I think I got it for Christmas. One of the years I got it for Christmas for my parents. And I started shooting videos for my friends who were better at biking than me. I guess they really liked it, so I continued doing that. And it slowly went from a video, like a BMX video, to you know something a little bit more serious. And then picked up my first camera. And then I started shooting big rawhide events, okay. like festivals or raves, I guess. Oh, okay. And that kind of got me kickstarted and met a bunch of great people. And then I just started going down the line of meeting awesome businesses, working with very friendly people, and just going down the route of shooting commercial video either for their website or social media. That was my primary living for maybe four, four or five years. Good job. Man. Love it. Uh, I mean, I worked with some great people, and I got no complaints. I just, I have ADD, so I gotta keep kind of keep shifting things up a little bit. I can't do the same thing for too long. Edit, editing, editing is really fun for an hour a week. Every hour after that becomes like, oh, this is a job. Yeah, because it's can... it's if you want to edit it, the type of content. If you have fun content to edit, it's easy. Yeah. But if it's just commercial video work, it's like I don't really feel like editing talking head videos of you telling me about your your business and you don't find that interesting at all that doesn't rip <laughs> but your rompers. my job was to make it interesting I, yeah like one of the one of the companies that i worked for they work for cell phone companies and they don't even sell the cell phone tower or the components in the towers they sell batteries for the towers that's it no one cares about that. So it's like, how do I make it interesting? So there's like, when we did the video, I had my drone in their warehouse. We we're flying it through, doing like zip shots here, like zoom in pins. Like it was like the wild, it was the coolest video. And they just, <laughs> all they did was sell batteries for yeah. cell phone towers. Not even anything fun, but you know, my job is to make it look cool. And I sure did make those batteries look really cool. Well, nice. one of your commercials, I feel like, and I could be misremembering, did you say you did like a cologne commercial? Aqua oh, de Gio? Yes, so this is a funny, a funny story. The first time that I had my go-kart out at El Mirage, we tend to go out to El Mirage to go ride because there's nothing out there and you can just ride forever. Okay, I thought that you were in like Utah flatlands or like the salt uh, salt flats or whatever. I've never actually, never actually okay. been to the salt flats. Okay. I lived there for a year, but never been to the salt flats but El Mirage is something that me and my friends go do frequently and we'll bring this stuff out the guys will bring their big you know dirt bikes and enduro bikes uh, Keith one of the guys that started the trip he's got a big massive bike and he last year I think he went 130 or 140 yeah. like really like scary awesome. fast but nice man we thought it would be fun to film my friend to try and make it look like it was a cologne commercial so Vince he's a he's a pretty good looking guy but he's not like not cologne commercial, <laughs> yeah. but he's not Johnny Depp. No, he's Brad not Pitt. Johnny Depp. But I did make him look like Johnny Depp. Like we got him getting out of the car, and it's all in slow mo. It's like black and white. We get him getting on the bike, and he's got this like vintage. What are those bikes with the handles that kind of drop down? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> not a uh, penny, penny word. Not penny a penny farthing. No, no, no. <laughs> that's way different. Um, anyways, he's got this old vintage bike. It's a Honda. It's really, really cool. But he, uh, we get him getting on there and like doing the kickstart and like all the detail shots. And then we get him ripping around the desert, going super fast. And I'm on my go kart yes. with my gimbal, one hand driving, one hand filming it. And let me tell you, if you want to film dirt bikes or something out in the desert and you have the space, the go kart is the perfect because you're at the perfect height. Yeah. You're sitting there, you have full control, you got your brake and your gas, steering wheel, and then you got your camera. So I'm sitting there, we're filming this like commercial. It's the coolest thing ever. And at the end of the day, it was just stuff for the video, but we were like, this could really work. So we got the Aqua De Gio, some, I don't know, it was some song that like, <laughs> it sounded so, it's just, it was, it, was, it, was, it was the perfect, I think it was a song that maybe they might have used or something that they could have used. We used that song, we turned it like black and white, all the shots of the slow-mo, we just thought it was so funny. So we ended up turning into that and then we got a shot of the uh, Aqua De Gio, we put it on a glass table and shot it from the ground up with the sky in the background. And we did the last shot, like, and we, I mean, I don't want to say we stole the audio bite, but we we, we took a little bit of the Aqua De Gio, like, at the end. <laughs> and I think there was very few people that thought it was actually fake. Like, people, people... I thought it was real. People, as, of, as of now, I still thought it was real. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, the, the comments we get was, like, Vince, like, I didn't know that you were working with, like, Giorgio Armani. Like, so many people thought it was real, and I'm like, 
Thank Might you. be. Maybe. 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 Because I was going to say, I'm going to bite your Aqua de Gio commercial and make my own to make it ridiculous, but yours is already a spoof of it. So I would be making a spoof of a spoof. Yeah. I'm still going to do it. That's not, that didn't stop me. I but. mean, it makes you look, it, it'll make someone look really hot. I mean, that whole thing looked legit, and I, I was totally fooled, so good job on that. Vince did look really good. I, <laughs> I, I do have to give that to him. We did make him look good. How did you come across the name Go Kart God? Because you were a different name beforehand, right? Yeah, so originally I came up with the name Go Kart Fab. And not realizing that there's someone else in the industry, I've never met him, but he goes by Cartfab. Obviously, conflict of interest. I didn't know that until it was too late and the name was already made. Already made a logo. And then about a week, a week and a half in, I search up the name and there's a whole channel that's got all this, almost exactly the same name and he's pretty well established. So I was like, okay, well, I need to change this because I can't, I'm not gonna, no, that's not, I'm not gonna do that. Too close, yeah. So, believe it or not, the name came from my friend Calvin and I were sitting in the garage, we're you know, shooting the shit, having fun and trying to come up with a name. There's another guy in the filming industry that he uses GoPros and he films on a gimbal. They called him Gimbal God. Okay. He's really good at filming with a gimbal. He, he would chase people with snowboard, like down snowboards, go off jumps with them with a gimbal. Nice. And they called him Gimbal God. Anyways, Calvin was like, why don't you be like go-kart God? And I was like, it's kind ding, of ding, ding, that's, ding. that's kind of catchy. That, could be, catchy. that could be a winner. I was like, Something do you think like... there'd be a conflict of interest with that word? And I think now people are like, I mean, I don't want to make assumptions for people, but I think now people are like, kind of like, okay with the word not being used. In the I don't mean it in a religious, I don't even know what it means. Yeah. We just, it's a cool name. I don't, there's no affiliation to anything, but. Yeah. So you, have, you haven't like started a cult or anything. You're just, With little no. followers well, or anything. Not, not yet. <laughs> not, not yet. yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> That's phase three. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the, the go-kart god name came from Calvin. I owe it to him. Like he was the one that came up with that idea and it's very catchy and hopefully down the line we're gonna end up doing a women's line as well. So we'll have go-kart god and then we'll have go-kart goddess, yes. which will be the women's line. It's a it's a pink logo with a little crown instead of the, the little oh, flames. Okay, nice. Um, okay, nice, nice. We got snapbacks and little crop tees for that already that like, we've done samples nice. for and, and then we're starting another Instagram for people that either do our builds or buy product from us and that will your be your followers go- the followers yes. okay what are they they're gonna be go-kart gang see he does have a gang Ga- of followers oh, yeah, yeah. so yeah. it is a little bit of a cult a go-kart cult <laughs> yeah so we have we have a, an instagram page called go-kart gang and that will be anybody that you know that's our that's our gang of guys i don't yeah. know so okay like, yeah we love we love that that's how the, that's how the name came about so okay. it's it's really exciting i i think it's a good name and we'll end up doing a whole GKG. That's, that's us. That's our, you know. <laughs> well, this morning brand. I was thinking about the GKGs. I was like, he needs to get go kart grandpa, grandma. Ooh. See, Ooh. yeah, you gotta think about the whole family. Get everyone oh. in there. Okay. Go kart grandson. Oh, there you go. Yeah. All right, so on that note, we're going to take a quick break. We're gonna hear a few words from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. You know what? One of our sponsors might be uh, Aqua de Gio, so. Oh, we'll perfect. Okay. Right. Yeah. Cue it, cue it. <laughs> Bam. Whoa. Hey, Jason. Everything good? You want us to come back, man, or? How? I'm trying to get these people to figure out how good of a deal this Rascal Light is. Well, you, you tell them it's a super cost-effective kit. Plus, it's a complete mini bike for under 500. Yeah, da, 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 da. I want these people to feel this deal. A deal. A great deal. Hey, maybe we should go get some fresh air. Yeah, go get some fresh air. Any ideas yet? Got it. O-M-W. 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 
so, what do we think? And we're back with Go Kart Guy, ladies and gentlemen. All eyes to the main stage. We got Go Kart Guy. <laughs> All right, Zane, what you got? <laughs> um, so you, you were saying you kind of started, you know, you, you didn't have a go kart, and then you just were like, I'm gonna try this out and see what a build is like. So how did you get up getting into fabrication? Because I've seen some of your content is like you're in like a CAD program and messing around, and like how did you get started with that? I have zero fabrication background at all. Nice go kart guy. Like no welding background. Okay. I'm very mechanically inclined because my dad put me up to it when I was a kid. Like, I mean, I was building my first computer with my dad when I was like 14. Nice. Whoa, okay, nice. So, technical, super nerd, like over the top. But like, I'd, I'll just see if I can find the picture, but my dad helped me build. I came up with the idea I wanted to make a hovercraft when I was a kid. Oh. Whoa. So, out of a piece of plywood, a trash bag, and a leaf blower. Oh, I don't I, think that's going to work. <laughs> oh, it did. Oh, it did. I floated down the road. <laughs> yeah, I connected to the wall. It was great. So, I actually did float down the road. It was the trash bag, and I poked holes in it, and it created a... Oh, you were able to create that I little created bit a of hover. Yeah, yeah, I was able to sit on it and float. Like, wow. So, that's my fabrication background. Oh, okay, um, but cool. a lot yeah. of it was just like... BMX bikes, working on tools and stuff like that. But when it came to welding and then it came to go-karts, I had zero experience. The go-karts, the welding came from me. And I picked up a titanium 125 from Harbor Freight, the, you know, a cheap welder. And I didn't know how to weld, so I was like, let's try and learn it. So I ended up actually welding a welding table. Oh. I made a welding table to start, and I learned a lot through that. And then it gave me enough experience to kind of get started with building a go-kart and really the original design process of me building a go-kart was just start here and I know where I want to go and just figure it out along the way. And you drew the map in as you went. So it's very inefficient. You end up wasting <laughs> a lot of money and a lot of time because you end up either backtracking or doing things twice or it's not efficient. So the new thing for me is I want to try and make it inside of SolidWorks first. Oh, okay. Get the dimensions right, get it all organized, to make sure that I understand how it's supposed to work and function before it actually ends up hitting the pavement and me start cutting it. I think it's going to work a lot better. It will take a lot more time, but that way we're not wasting time trying to figure it out and realizing that it's not working. Like yeah. trying to do visualization without any kind of actual representation of it on paper. Yes. So that's how I started. The first go kart was just a full send. It just, I don't know what I'm doing. I watched a couple of YouTube videos, ordered some parts, and it somehow worked. Well, okay. did it together and it stuck together. And I sold that one, and then the radio flyer was another full send. You were telling me a little bit about this before, but could, would you mind talking a bit about how this is like a collaborative effort that you've been doing? Yeah, so the radio flyer was, I was selling my first go-kart made out of square tubing. It wasn't a special go-kart, but it, it looked kind of cool. I put it up on Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that. Anyways, um, a guy named Anthony saw it and he was wondering if he could basically take a radio flyer wagon and bolt it to the top of my go-kart and make a radio flyer. And I was like, no, we don't have to do that. Like, I could can, I can probably custom build you something. So we came up with the idea of doing this. And I think the really kind of ingenious design behind this one is the axle components. So the sprocket and the brakes are kind of within the tub. So it ends up saving a lot of space and then we ended up fitting a whole 212 with a torque converter in the tub, which makes it very compact. And it's, I think it's a really cool design. I didn't really do my research when it came to steering because there's no, there's no caster. I mean, it, like the wheels, they don't like kind of yeah. have this turning motion. They just turn flat. So it doesn't turn at all. Like you can just gas it and it 
turn it and you'll just continue going forward. So <laughs> it looks cool, but there's definitely some problems. So we're gonna probably end up redoing that soon. Room for improvement. There's definitely room for That's improvement. That's all, yeah. It definitely looks cool though. Oh, oh you do wheelies like it's like it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, we put a wheelie bar on recently. Um, <laughs> we wouldn't have done a wheelie bar if it didn't have enough power, but I mean, the thing's got way more power and like, I ended up actually almost falling off yesterday. Well, I did fall off and then it ran me over and I have a big scar on my leg now. Oh, we geez. have that footage. <laughs> I'm gonna grab that footage, we'll throw that in. <laughs> Oh, uh, which one? The the one of him? Yeah. Let's see. We we got one of your your leg just getting eaten up. <laughs> yes, I'll have to find that when one. When was this? This was yesterday at Bill Break Repeats place, I believe. Oh yeah. boy. <laughs> oh, it's this one. A very short video. Okay, let's see it. <laughs> Freaking out! Like he's. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very it short video. You can see it in his Dude, face. Dude, that face says it in his all. face. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? And... That's how Anyways, you see, is. you see John, and I don't really think he knew how much power it had or how quickly it would get put down. And it's not even a second long. It's half a second of... Huh? <laughs> and you see his face light up. Like, you see, you see power. the fear of Go-Kart God in his eyes. <laughs> It's easy. <laughs> I took like one lap on it and I was like, hey, you want to drive it? Not knowing what was going to like, yeah. not really knowing what's going to happen. Yeah. Half a video of him. Yeah. But well, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was a collaborative effort. So the guy that wanted me to build it for him, I built the frame, mounted the, the tub and, and then he was building the engine the same time that I was building that and we ended up kind of putting those together okay and then from there we kind of went back and forth once i got finished with one section he ended up actually doing a custom exhaust that goes from the engine all the way up over the front and out the back he got that built by someone and then you know wrapped it and then we just put new tires and a bigger rear axle the other rear axle was a little short okay. so it ended up kind of making it look a little squish so we put the bigger rear axle, big tires on it, and then the wheelie bar, and I feel like it's really got that, you know, it's it's really come together now, and it looks it looks pretty solid. Although the steering doesn't work, it looks very cool. It looks so good. You would never tell that it doesn't steer properly. No. You can, it, it, it does steer, I swear. <laughs> yeah, every time you get out, I see you lift the front end and whip it around. I figured out how to get it to turn. Yesterday, <laughs> okay. I, I was going around at Build Break Repeats, their shop. I was like, okay, well, if there's no camber, or sorry, caster, the caster, by the way, guys, is to lift the rear inner wheel when you're turning. So by getting the wheels to twist down, mm -hmm. what it does is it pushes the cart forward and the upper inner wheel gets pulled up and you get you get turned back. Nice. So, okay, yeah. So that's the idea behind caster. And if you don't have caster and the wheels just stay like this, the whole thing stays flat and you're you're fighting the two tires. So I was like, why don't I just make my own caster? So instead of easily going to my turns, now I would just grab the steering wheel and grab the, the pan. And if I'm gonna take a left turn, <laughs> I just hit it really hard and give it a little yank and it just cut. Yeah, and it just nice. works now. And I'm like, it's very dangerous because there's a lot of torque on that engine. Oh, I'm sure. So you give her a little gas and like, you feel like you're gonna fly off. It's And there's no steering, there's no seat belt. You're not locked in. Like, that's why I fell off. Yeah. That's why, kind of why I fell off is because it was so much. And then my leg got cut underneath it. And it was, it's all good times yeah. though. <laughs> Nice. All good times. Have you have you done any racing with your with go karts or have you like gone out? No, no. I've actually the last time I was at a race thing was like you know those K one places and that oh. was a long time ago. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, if any of you guys want to sponsor me and you know let me come ride your race karts, I'll happily take that for you guys. But <laughs> okay. No, I don't know. I mean, you guys probably know this. There's a big kind of clash between the racing community and the DIY community. I guess it's really interesting as you'll see the racing community. If I was to bring one of my go karts into like a racing facility, they would basically tell me to screw off. Yeah. Yeah. Because they run their business in a very specific way. They want people to either buy their carts or spend a lot of money doing these special you know, two-stroke stuff. By that, by that specific it's engine, very, specific body, everything, yeah. Yeah, or else you're not racing and they won't help you. And it's like not inviting. Then again, that might be the only place for someone to buy a go-kart. So yeah. it's kind of annoying and I think there's definitely a clash. So for me, like racing has never been a primary goal for me. It's just a completely different world. That's how the F1 drivers get started. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's great. It just takes a lot of money, and I think it's not accessible for a lot of people, and that's okay. But you know, you gotta. But we need like a DIY league or something where yeah, people want... just bring bring what you bring. Yeah. So I mean, hopefully one day I always get that question because people ask like, "Hey, like, what do you do?" And I'm like, "I make go karts for a living." And then they stop, and they look the look on their face. They're like, and I'm like, "Yes, 
that. Whatever you're thinking, that. They're like, so do you have like a track or like do you sell them? And I'm like, no. But let's let's bring that up. So go so with Go Kart God, you want to I get, I think you have a business plan going off and your first domino to me it sounds like you want to come up with plans. Yes. Like the hawk that I've seen. Yes. So Tell we, us about that. So we've been working on go kart plans since the beginning. So in September twenty one we started the channel or the you know, the Instagram and, and then we started posting it on YouTube and people really took they loved it. They loved what it what it was and I, I promised them go kart plans. Yeah. And almost a year later, after many months of like sleepless nights, I really actually haven't slept the last like probably three months. It's not like I'm going to bed to sleep. I figured out, and it's probably completely unhealthy, but I figured out that your your REM sleep cycle is within uh, 90, 90 to 95 minutes. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing six to eight hours of sleeping, I would start splitting up my sleeping into either 15 minute naps because that's before you hit REM, or if I want to take a longer nap, it would be, I would set it for an hour and 35 minutes. Oh wait, are you on that Iron Man thing? What is the Iron Man thing? That's the, they, they used to call it that. It was like the Iron Man sleep schedule, but it was like basically you, yeah, you have like these micro sleep sessions. So it was like, you'd have an hour here every, you know, however long. That's kind of how it is because yeah, I would do little, little sleep sessions and I started sleeping so little, like when I got really kickstarted into kind of going into this, it went from me going to bed at like one to 2 a.m. and then I would go to bed for a few hours, wake up nice and early, six, seven in the morning, whatever. And then I would go the next day and then it started going from like four to five and then six to seven. And then by the time like I was getting around, it was like, I was going to bed at like the middle of the day. And like, I was like making like metal runs after I had not sleeping all morning and I'm going to the metal shop. They have no idea, like they don't, who knows? Yeah. And then it got to the point where I was like going to bed at like four in the afternoon. And then I ended up catching back up to my old sleep schedule. Like, <laughs> cause I've been working so hard and yeah, the, the go-kart plans is something that I've been working on and I tried to hire someone else to help me and it, it wasn't getting done the way that I wanted it to. I have a very specific idea of how I want go-kart plans to be provided and help people and trying to hire someone, it was a nightmare. So I went through the process of actually buying the program, which is SolidWorks, yeah. and trying to learn it myself. And SolidWorks is something that people go to school for. It's a very intensive program. I have no background in it at all, but I did watch my friend John, who I went to university with. I dropped out of ASU Polytech, by the way. Only did three semesters, but one of the guys that I went to school with, his name is John, super friendly guy. He made off-road go-karts for one of the classes or electives that he was taking. And he helped me build some of the first kind of prototype files in SolidWorks on the computer. And I watched him for about two months. Didn't really think I learned anything. And then when I got back into the program, I was like, oh, I kind of remember this. And I kind of started picking up here and there. And then sure enough, now, you know, like eight months later, like I'm very good with SolidWorks. I don't know how I did it or why, but like to me, it's like I wanted to do something specific and I was like, I can't let anybody else. It's not that I can't let somebody do it, but they're just not gonna do it the way that I wanna do it. And with the amount of time and detail that I wanna put into it, it's very difficult to hire, hire someone for that. So, well, cause they're never gonna be as passionate as you are about it, obviously. Yeah, it's, it's a little unhealthy. I probably should get more sleep, but <laughs> everybody's so excited for the plans to get released. I can't go without posting. Like people will ignore the posts now. They don't even care what's in it. They just like, one of the guys is really great. He's been commenting on my posts. He's like, my son, my son has been asking for the plans. He like updates me every hour. He's like asking for the plans, like like on the hour, on the dot. I'm like, I'm so sorry. They're just, it, it takes so long. Like the amount yeah. of detail that I have into these plans. I want it to be helpful. I want it to be informative. I've taken a look at kind of what other people have provided and I want to kind of solve issues that maybe haven't been solved in the past. So you, you want it to be something where someone who has not been built a go-kart before can get these plans and jump into it. Like this That's, can be their stepping stone. Yes. The, okay. The goal was to give first time builders the opportunity to do something and actually have good detailed information. So instead of just a YouTube video, you're gonna get all the measurements, the, the cut list, the angles, everything that you could ever possibly want, it'll come in a digital file that's okay. downloadable to your phone. We wanted to make it so there was no proprietary parts, but to make it as simple as we did, we did have to make some components that are not proprietary, but it helps ease the process. If you wanna figure it out a different way, then that's fine, but there's a couple brackets that we're producing that help make it so that the square tubing is very easy 
to get your steering set up. One of the cool things we did is we made brackets to give you a certain angle of caster, a certain angle of camber, get your spindles locked in, and then also to weld your spindles on. And all of those are basically fixed angles that you will purchase. Yeah. You know, I want a 10 degree kit here, 10 degree kit here. And it means that you can't mess it up. And with square tubing, because there's no bending or changing of directions, if you set it at 10 degrees, it's locked in at 10 degrees. Meaning that you don't have to question the work that you did, if you welded it on correctly or not. If you put the part on, it will be 10 degrees. And that to me is like, steering is always one of those things that you're just guessing. Even if you have a good angle finder on it, you're never gonna get the numbers right off. Yeah. So having these brackets really changed everything. And again, it's trying to make it accessible and easy. And I think square tubing is very underrated in okay. the industry. I don't see a lot of people using one by one square tubing. And it's such a versatile material. And I think everybody knows that round tubing is it's more durable, it's it's stronger, it's this and you that. You can bend it nice and easily. You can bend it, yes, but you need an expensive bender. Yeah. So if we can avoid the bender and we can use a very accessible material like one by one square tubing, which is at every metal supply store. Ever. Yeah. And it comes in a nice thick wall too. So like any structural stuff, we'll use a 120 wall. Any non-structural, you can use 095 or 80 wall, I think. I'm not sure. Um, okay. But a I got little bit, you. A little bit thinner wall because it, it weighs a lot. That's why that's why we called her Big Bertha. It was built out of all square tubing. It was non-efficient and it's an overuse of metal. I mean, I think Big Bertha is probably about 600, 650 pounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's a minimum three-person lift. It, it's not possible to lift it with two people. Okay. It's that heavy. But no, the square tubing is very underrated as a material, and I really want to push for people to use it because it just opens it up and it makes it so simple for people to weld stuff onto it. It's easier to explain, easier to use, easier, easier to weld. There's no special angles or, or special tubing benders you need, and I think it's such a great material. I ended up making plans built off the whole idea of using square tubing. So nice. So, so. In, in my past life, I used to sell steel, okay. sheets, uh, square tube, round tube, all over the world. I have tried to make a cut to size kit and I've seen how expensive and how heavy it is. So let you know that your plans and what you're doing, what you're talking about, definitely gets me, gets my mind going because I want to see how you can cut costs. But before we go there, these plans, do you have an ETA on when you plan on releasing them? The ETA was about a month and a half ago. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're past that. All right. We're way past that. <laughs> oh, um, is that, that's why that guy's been reaching out to you every okay. hour. Yes. <laughs> so the plans were supposed to get released a little while ago, but because I've... I am so detail oriented and I have such a specific view for the way that I want them to go out. I will not put out a product that is not top notch. And I know everybody's so excited to get their hands on them, but I do have to take myself into, you know, into account and make sure that it's done right. Because if I release a product that is subpar, one, it's disappointing for me, but it also can upset people. So the goal for me is to release products that help people and do a good job of doing that. And I do plan on making revisions to the plans. There might possibly be some things that are not absolutely perfect. And I'm okay with that because we're still kind of beta testing it. But with the go-kart plans, I want to make sure that the first time that they get released, they actually work. Nice. And then after we build our version of it, because it still is an untested, yeah. it's still in untested water. It's in solid work, so everything's accurate and dimensionally right. The steering wheel turns and you can see the wheels turn. Like it all is lined up. It's all realistic dimensions, so technically, in the computer, it is a working go-kart. The wheels spin, the chain turns. Theoretically, it Theoretically, works. it is a great go-kart. Okay. But until it actually hits the pavement and we test the steering angles and stuff like that, we don't know. So the goal is this week, we're gonna try and release the plans to the public for the what? first time. Whoa. Yes. By so, the time this video is out, it's gonna be out? Okay, might, we'll, we'll drop a link if you can get if it to the, Yes, yes, okay. if, if, if it's done, it'll be on our website. And yeah, it's, it's really exciting. We're hoping to get it out this week. With that, there's gonna be tons of little accessories that go with it as well. So right now it's just gonna be the digital plans, downloadable by file. It'll get one file on your phone. You don't need to unzip it. It's just all the information's right there. Lots of graphics, lots of pictures, tons of great information. And the biggest thing was the graphics. Like through the instructions, you get pictures to line up with what you're doing. Yeah. With measurements. Like I've overthought it so much. Mm. Like I've been working on the plans for over a year. <laughs> so I've had so much time to think about how to make it the most efficient way and the most visually appealing way. And, and those things are all just... It you sounds know. like based on your sleep schedule, you have had more time thinking about this than you have sleeping the past year and a half. <laughs> oh, yeah. Unfortunately, I live, sleep, eat, and breathe 
go karts. Well, that's why you're the GKG man. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, do you plan on charging for these plans? Yes. Yeah, so the plans will go up for um, 89 at the beginning, and with that, it's really not even to charge for the plans. I think what the product that I'm producing, to me, I think it's worth it. I think for someone that wants to build a go kart, it will be the most efficient and the easiest way for someone to build a go kart. Okay. So that's the price that we're starting at now. I don't know the final resting price for the long term, but once we build our own go kart and we get it tested and we know that make sure that everything works, we might increase the price a little bit. But at the end of the day, if you want to build a go kart and you want the proper information to do it right, we've put the time in to make it make it right. So I think this is the first time that plans have been released that are this detailed. And again, the accessories that will get sold alongside that are one, the brackets that help save and reduce you time. We'll have the digital file, but we'll also have a physical print at some point. So if you want to have it at home and then flip through the pages, you know, you'll be able to write on the pages and actually scribble down your ideas and notes and stuff like that. We're also going to produce a four by six vinyl banner so that when you do make your go-kart and you cut your tubes, you'll be able to place this banner on the ground and put the tubes on the thing to make nice. sure that they're the right size. That nice. is very, great. very smart. So that's one of the accessories. I mean, there's a tons of other little things that we've been working on as well, but basically just see how efficient because the goal is on YouTube we're gonna try and build one of these go-karts in 24 hours okay from the ground up all the material everything on the ground ground up jump in jump in and do a video non-stop in 24 hours have it running and I think that's possible I think we're gonna do that so have you gone through and bought all the material for one go-kart and have you figured out like do, do your plan say you need six sticks of one by one 120 wall at 24 feet do, do you have that like that kind of yep. sheet? so in the material sheet you'll get your full length so you need approximately 30 feet of one by one tubing that's 120 wall which is quite thick and then you need 20 feet of another type of tubing but yeah we have that all laid out basically so any information you need on a material even like one of the things that we put in there as well is like buying metal can be intimidating so we have a whole section in there of basically helping you understand where to search for a metal supply store oh, nice. you know calling ahead to make sure that they have the material for you like nice. we've, we've thought about everything all the experience from this go-kart plan is I remember building my first go-kart and the reason that I'm doing this is to basically ease the process from that yeah like I know what I went through so why don't I just offer all the solutions You're forwarding information I'm forwarding all like I, here's all the problems I had here's all the solutions yeah. in one place like ha have you priced out I know that steel prices fluctuate do you know how much just a material building a go-kart would be the material is very simple it's one by one square tubing 120 wall 95 wall and then you have a like a aluminum so sheet aluminum you need maybe two feet by four feet of that and then you have 0.75 by 0.75 or three quarter inch square tubing to slide to create a seat slider and then maybe some like quarter inch rods. So the actual number of materials for the go-kart frame. Uh, I guess I bought simple. something. Oh, we got a bike. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, it's a two stroke. Very yeah. Clean. That's what you buy actually, for. I want it. <laughs> so do you think you can build a go-kart for the materials under 500 bucks? The materials will be under 300. Under 300, okay. Yes. Plus your planes, do you think someone can get in a go-kart if they have all the tools, of course? Would it be under 600, 700, 800 bucks to also get tires and wheels, engines? No, unfortunately right now, with the cost of go-kart parts being so high, it definitely is still going to be an investment. I know a lot of people still want to do it, so I'm going to provide the, the plans and and do the best job I can with what's available on the market right now. Definitely is a little bit more expensive, but at the end of the day, if someone's willing to put the time down, then I think, you know, they'll figure it out. And yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to hear a few words from our sponsors and we'll be right back. Here's our 98cc gasoline engine. Sometimes the 212 is a little too much and the 79cc just isn't enough power. So, our 98cc engine is an excellent addition to our lineup. This powerful small engine is great for young riders or adults looking to cruise. The 98cc engines are on sale for a limited time for $79.95. Get yours while they last. And we're back with Go Car God. <laughs> I can't help myself. So I wonder, so Go Car God, do you ever get into mini bikes? So we do have three mini bikes. Nice. What you got? They're all Megamoto 80s. Nice. We've put two 12s on them, and they're sitting on my side yard, and none of them run. 
<laughs> so, oh, I know, I know, I know. So the goal is actually to go and take those frames and turn them into something cool, but I really haven't had the time because of the time that I've invested in the go-kart plans and getting the business started and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we even picked up, a, I have a phone number now. So believe it or not, our public line is 480-955-CART. We have a phone number. Yeah. Everyone call so if you now. So if you want to give us a call, go ahead. Ask him when the plans are coming out. You can go ahead and ask when the plans are coming out. It's but still crazy you say yes, but it's just you. It's just me, but it's, it's us. It's always you. <laughs> it sounds cooler, all right? So it does sound cooler, but I feel bad for you because My you parents say you. this. They're, they're like, Eric, who's us? Who's we? And then my me mom- Me and my, my buddy. My, I, my mom will be like- Okay, he's got imaginary friends again. Imaginary friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> your um, internet friends. Yeah, so we do have some mini bikes that we plan on doing something with. I don't want to sell them because, I don't know, I could do something with yeah, them. Yeah, you could. I also thought of another really cool idea was I thought of making a go-kart that has like removable mini bikes so that for oh example- Oh my goodness, you just, you're, <laughs> you're talking to Zane right now. Keep going. <laughs> okay, so we build a go-kart. It has its own engine and it has <laughs> mini bikes that basically mount to the back of it. So for oh. example, you go on a ride and you have to ride down the street and people are like their engines are breaking or, or this and that like we go to LA all the time and people are breaking down and they don't have time to fix it so what you could do is basically like unlink one of the one of the bikes they ride that one and then you plug their bike in that's broken onto the, the little system and basically or like if the go-kart breaks then you could take the mini bike and ride the mini bike and pull like that's so. not as ridiculous that actually makes sense what? Zane, tell him, drop, drop what okay. you want to do. Okay, I don't know. Are you familiar with Star Wars? A little bit, maybe. Okay, do you Enough. know what? Pod racing. Yes. Okay, I was trying to tell them I want to make a pod racer that is a go-kart body with its own engine that also has two additional mini bikes on the Can we do a, a collaborative front. project? I am down. Can we do this, Dude, I am, I am totally Let's down. Go. Let's, Let's go. Let's go. There we go, finally. Yeah. Isaac, come on. Let's go We're doing a podcast. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I'm glad that you're the first person who I've told that to and hasn't immediately been like, you big old wizard. <laughs> Never. I think it's the coolest <laughs> idea. We're doing it. Yeah, man. He's also on lack of sleep, so just you're uh, right, yeah. assault. <laughs> oh, wait, listen to this. So last night, me and all the guys, cars and camera, build, build, build repeat, we went to go grab uh, pizza at a, at a restaurant. I'm like, when I drive, I drive a lot. I'll put 30, 40,000 miles on a car in a year. Like, yes. it's, it's insane. I've gotten to the point now, it's so autopilot for me to pull over and take a nap on the side of the road because I don't like to risk it. I'm, I drive so much that it's not even worth it. If no, I get a little no. bit tired, I'll pull over, I'll set an alarm for 15 minutes. It's 11 o'clock at night. They've offered for me to stay in you know, the room with them because I, I didn't book a hotel and I was going to yeah. just go grab one and like, you're more than welcome to stay. And I was like, this is my first time meeting them. So hospitality wise, like, I love them. Like, it's so crazy. They're to be. sweet dudes, They're man. They're amazing. So like, sweethearts, like the best. So they've offered for me to come crash in a room with them or drive them back to the hotel. And it's 11 o'clock. I'm driving back and I pull over to take a little 15 minute nap and I, I knock out. Cause this is the first, oh, like, no. so this is the first time. And th also they've just invited me and then I disappear off the face of the map <laughs> Yeah. for a whole hour. I get a text at like midnight and John's like, you know, hey, like, let me know when you're you're swinging by. I was behind them following them. And then I just take a turn off. So mid drive home, I'm just off on the side of the road, taking a nap for 20 minutes. And it ended up being an hour. And I was like, I felt so bad because I was like, did they just think I ditched them or like, yeah. just, like they've invited me, they're super friendly and I've just like disappeared. Like, he just rode off on a dirt trail somewhere and we don't know what happened to him. Well, how that did was, it end? Well, I mean, I ended up going to the hotel. They, okay. they, they didn't really care, but I just, I thought it was funny because I was supposed to be following them. <laughs> and then I disappear off the face of the map for like an hour. I mean, nothing really happened, but I just thought it was really funny because I was so little sleep that by the time that I actually got around, to sleeping, it just happened to be on the side of the road and like crashed hard. Yeah. So, yeah. but you needed so, that. So wait, yeah. are you driving back tonight then? I'll probably drive back uh, Sunday. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. good, good. Yeah, Got yeah, it. more so driving. You, you have time to get at least another like two hour naps. This in. is the first time I've really slept for more than a few hours. Oh, uh, nice, like, man. <laughs> Like seriously, the, the <laughs> first time I've slept for more than a few hours at a time. Like it's been, it's been fun. I love working hard. So, do you know. need a hotel room for tonight? Uh, no, I think I'll probably end up crashing with them again. Okay. Yeah. If, if yeah, plans yeah. change, just come see us. We'll we'll definitely hook you up. No, I appreciate that. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. Are you cool if we do some uh, questions from a hat real quick? Sure. Let's do it. Okay. Love sounds to. good. Okay. If you were a transformer, what vehicle would you turn into? Mm, that's a good question. Mm. Radio flyer go kart. Radio flyer go kart. <laughs> that would be pretty sweet. You know what? One of these vintage, like Coca Cola, like fridges. 
I feel like that would be pretty cool. Like, obviously awesome. you're a cool transformer, but then it's like one of those like prop hunt things where you're like, oh, just hide in a corner. I'm a fridge. <laughs> yeah, like... Totally but miss the secretly battle. on the side, yeah. I'm like a cool like robot fighter. Michael Bay is filming the whole thing. B things are exploding everywhere, and then we just got like a Coke fridge boy. <laughs> <laughs> Coke just pops out. <laughs> okay, man. Yeah. I could be a fridge. I could do the fridge. I think that'd be kind of an interesting. Little. Okay. I mean, do I have to be a car? No. No, you can no, be you anything. Bro. I could be a fridge. You could roll me. Yeah. Yo, dude, it's 2023. You can be anything you want. I technically I classify as a fish. There you go. Okay. <laughs> So. You know, I'm I'm amazed that you've done so much as a fish. You're like yeah. you're so out of water right now, bro. I am very like I'm not even in the water at the moment. No, it's crazy. It's wild. So uh, as far as streaming, do you watch other YouTube people? Wait, or that he's we a should, fish? No, yet. Yeah. <laughs> do you subscribe to anyone that we should be subscribing to? So I do subscribe to you know Redbeard and you know Cars and Cameras, yeah. Build Break Repeat. Uh, I mean, outside the industry. What's your guilty pleasure? I would say YouTube? being a filmmaker is probably things that you want something I mean, that's nicely done, right? Yeah, so Donut Media, okay. oh, probably yeah. top top one of the top watches, yeah. and then the Hoonigan stuff, the yes, this sir. or that races. Yeah. I actually was gonna talk to John. I would love to do like a this or that like series of races where like different YouTubers come together and battle like cars. Boom, 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 let's do so, it. Maybe we could do something like that. Other than that, I don't really consume a lot because I spend so much time working. I was, yeah. So the consumption is not like hardly there. I really stopped consuming because if I consume content, I mean, it's dopamine hit and you just get kind of locked in. So yes. I try and stay away from consumption as much as possible because especially with my ADD, it really messes with the dopamine and it makes it very difficult for me to work. So as long as I kind of stay off my phone, you know, I put my phone to the side, kind of keep it on silent and just that allows me to work really hard and really mm -hmm. fast. And it takes a long time, but you know, the less I consume, the more I get done. And at the end of the day, I, I want to be a producer. And yeah. I mean, it's great to consume the content i think people love it but you know at the end of the day i want to be producing the content yeah we're gonna go really hard on youtube this year we haven't really pushed for it at the moment we have about eight videos up on youtube now i love making youtube videos but i just haven't invested the time yet because we just just me it's not we yeah. it's just me just yeah you're getting your it's me myself going. and i yeah. we yeah. is me myself and i exactly and hopefully we can help you out somehow i don't know yeah. how we can help you out but I'm i see excited. that you're a go-getter and i want to be able to help you out somehow. let's do it let's go so outside of youtubers and i know you like to do more producing than anything if you did have time what are you binge watching Netflix, HBO, Prime, anything? I do actually own a TV. Nice. Okay, that's a weird flex, but I got you. So yeah, yeah. I do actually own a TV. It is not plugged in. Nice. It's sitting somewhere in my living room. Consumption of Netflix, Prime, nothing. nothing. Like, nothing. I mean, I'll watch the occasional movie here and there, but I mean, outside of like my work, I mean, people probably think I'm crazy. Like, I. It's okay. I don't mind. Yeah, it's no. just whatever. You're, no, no, you're committed. That's I'm, different. Yeah, I'm overly committed. Yeah. yeah. So don't really consume outside of that. I mean, outside of me being on the computer, it's difficult to work out. Like that's one of the things I'm really passionate about is working out. So like I haven't really been doing a lot of working out either because it's just. I'm so so that's busy where to the do. magic mic thing comes that's from. That's where it comes. Okay. We were saying we're saying. I mean, I bet his squat is high. <laughs> I bet he's like 400. Oh, I wish I squatted more. No, I I don't know. But yeah, working out's one of those things. Another really big pastime for me is cooking. I love cooking. Whoa. Oh, nice man. Hey, so does John. John likes to cook. I love. Well, yeah. You, you want one. to talk about a throwdown? That's it right there. We got go kart god and John going head to head in the kitchen. Pies, Let's please. Apple Let's pies, do it. Though. Yeah. Kid, uh, cooking is one of those things that, like, if I wasn't doing go karts or like professional videography, I would probably be cooking in the kitchen. Oh, okay. Like, it's that that serious for me. I love cooking. Have you ever done any cooking content or? I have some cooking content I put on like my Instagram, like a personal Instagram page and stuff like that. But other than that, no, I don't really. You okay. Know, I don't Got know. you. Well, what's well, your go to? What's your go to cook thing? Your meal. Yeah. Okay, so I like to host for my friends. Nice. So when I do a party for other people, I'm usually doing like Italian food. So, you know, chicken parm, eggplant parm. Uh, okay. I make really great fermented pizza dough. That's Very a nice. consumption that I actually do. So on YouTube, there's a guy named Vito. Okay. Uh, and he makes great pizza dough. So look up how to make pizza dough. And this guy, he's got this amazing Italian accent and he talks about making up a, a Polish and he makes great pizza dough and I've watched all of his videos and that's like something I actually consume and it's like how to make great pizza and I've been trying to perfect pizza so I'll make So when you say a fermented dough is that like a sourdough kind of? It kind of is so you make the dough and then you let it ferment over either a few days oh, okay. or either on the counter for a little bit or in, in the fridge for a few days and it adds such a, a great like flavor yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know so I've been doing that that's one of the, the crowd favorites. There's lots of other things like uh, I make like an apple and candied pecan salad 
But the food that I actually consume is just like tub meals. So like, I don't cook for myself fancy. I go to Costco, I bulk buy ground beef and ground turkey and chicken, <laughs> and I cook it up and I mix it with either quinoa or rice. Nice. And it ends up, I'll end up with like 30 tubs sometimes all in my freezer. One goes out in the microwave, one comes out of the freezer, goes in the fridge. It's just a rotating cycle of like boring meals. For me, it's really great because it's just, I have a big 40 inch flat top grill. So all the meat goes on at one time, cook a big pot of rice, and then nice. just start funneling it into these tubs, go in the freezer. They're good for about a month. And I'll sometimes eat two, three, four tubs in a day. It really just depends on how hungry I am. Gotcha. But now I don't have to think about food. I okay. love cooking, but it's one of those things that if I can just avoid the thinking of food at all, it's just microwave. It's not like it's more for other people. The exciting part of cooking and the fun stuff of cooking is like, I definitely feel like I have a hosting side of things where I love to host for people and yeah. make them feel good. I mean, to see someone a smile on someone's face because you brought them just good food, them, yeah. like that's, I don't know, it's such a... That's the joint I, right there, man. I'm, I'm an empath at heart, and that's why like I want to to make go-kart plans to help people out and that's why I want to cook for people and make people like, I don't know, motivate people, make people feel good. Like that's that's the driving force for me is like I want to do stuff for other people because that's what makes me happy internally. Like yeah. I would not be doing this if like it's not for the money at all. Like I'm not here for money. I am here to help people. I do have to fund a business, but at the end of the day, like I'm 100% here to make sure that other people are good and they're happy and they, you know, for example, just building a go-kart. Make it simple, make it fun, make it exciting. Like it's so complicated that if we can start reducing it down and boiling it down to the basics and helping people just start their first build and get excited about it and know that it's possible because the information's out there. That to me is the most exciting thing. Like I'm so excited because there's so many people ready and willing to build their first go-kart. And if we put the information out there, people will come, brings more people in the sport. There's no competition. We're all here to have fun. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, we're here to have fun. The more products, the more services, the more information, everything that we can put out there, it benefits everybody. Yeah. And it's, it's so exciting because I know that the work that I do indirectly comes to you guys because yeah. you guys are gonna have to get parts bought for those things. Yeah. And it's like, we're all trying to do the same thing. We're all trying to have fun. And we're all just trying to rip on go-karts and mini bikes yeah. and have a smile on our face. And at the end of the day, that's the main goal. Yeah, man. Be happy and have fun and yeah. <laughs> enjoy the process, you know? Yeah, so. that's a, that's a GKG 316, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, so uh, I have my last rando question and then okay, we, can, we can roll out. What's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Hmm, best piece of advice I ever got was from my cousin Steve. Okay. Shouts out to you, Steve. Steve is a cousin that I looked up to a lot. I'm actually one of the youngest in my extended family. We're all Canadian. I'm the only American born in my family, and everybody else is Canadian. And one of these times, I think I might have asked him that question. I was like, what's one piece of advice? If you give me one piece of advice, what would that one piece of advice be? He said, live with your parents as long as you can. Oh, nice. <laughs> so it wasn't the answer that I was looking for, but until I got old enough to understand why that was a thing, it does make sense. Like. The longer that you can live with your parents and save your bread and yeah. be able to fund either your projects or your fun stuff and, and work on the side, like that to me was like, I mean, I stayed with my parents quite a long time and then I ended up getting my own place. But yeah, by having the ability to, you know, stay with your parents and have a good, good family life, but also, you know, the ability for you to work on things and, you know, save a little extra dough to work on your own fun stuff. Like that really opens up a lot for people. So I, I don't know, that's one of the weird kind of best pieces of advice I've ever gotten. Uh, live with your parents as long as you can because you end up, you know, being able to do extra things that maybe you wouldn't have been done if you're trying to pay for your living expenses. Oh man, yeah, so. no, I, right out of college, I, I was gonna go live with my family and then my friends would talk me into it. We were like, oh, we'll go get an apartment uh, over in like Williamsburg or something. Yeah, I think I did that for about three months and, and it was spending 1500 as one of four guys in a three bedroom apartment. I was like, you know what? It's better to be at home. It would, it would be better right now. <laughs> it's not, it just feels it's, I mean, living now is so expensive. It's like, it's hard to want to do that. So it's like, yeah, if you can live with your parents, especially you younger guys out there, stay with your parents as long as you can. Like, it means you have more money to build go-karts. <laughs> there you go. You know? exactly. Yeah. Like, at the end of and the day, you, you want to build a go-kart, right? And you can find those plans right here. Yeah. <laughs> so I was wondering, how do you feel, or would you ever go 100 miles an hour on a mini bike on like a quarter mile track? Oh, no, never, That's on, not a, your thing? never on a mini bike. Never, never, on, never a mi on a mini bike. <laughs> okay. 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 Is that scary to you? I've been out in Compton with the guys out there, 
Yeah. I've seen people go 100. I mean, some of the guys wear helmets and suits, but some I, of them don't. Some of them don't, and, and they go right into a crowd. Please, guys, wear a helmet. Like, especially if you're riding. Like, mini bikes are dangerous. They are. They are dangerous. You can ride them safely, but you can get hurt. Yeah. So please, please wear helmets. We've seen people get really hurt. Wear, wear a helmet. It's it's your noggin. It's your it's it's all your information. Just keep your keep your head together. Yeah. If you can, please wear a helmet. If you can wear any piece of safety gear, just wear a helmet. It's so worth it. If you can, wear a full face because I've broken lots of teeth and those are really expensive. Oh. <laughs> What'd you break your teeth on? BMX biking. Oh, okay. Oh, just eating, eating yeah. your handlebars or something? Or I went up a quarter pipe and then I pulled out and then just went front tire, knuckles, oh. face. Oh. But, okay, on back on that topic, 100 miles an hour. I don't want to give away too much information yet, but we're starting a project this year. We have a snowmobile engine. Nice. Okay. We're building a go-kart. Some have similarities to Big Bertha. Nice. But it's basically going to be a completely redesigned full V2. Like a bigger Bertha. It won't be bigger, Okay. but it's going to be a different model of a car. I okay. don't want to give it away yet. Okay. It is one of the most iconic cars in the JDM community. It has never been miniaturized at all. If you search up this car, it has never been miniaturized once. We're putting a 700cc snowmobile engine in it. Nice. 140 horsepower. Nice. It's got a CVT. We plan on doing, uh, you know, actual cars, tires, and rims. So the goal is to put some 13-inch rims with 225 by 40 by... Toyo makes a 225 by 40 by 13 tire, so it's like a 20-inch height and like eight or nine inches wide. So those are the wheels that we're gonna use for this go-kart. We're gonna do Harley air suspension, so it'll be bagged. So when it's on the cantilever suspension, you can hit button and nice. lower it down. Oh, nice. So like when I talk about this thing being over the top, this is gonna be one of the coolest things ever. Like, nice. I'm so excited for that. I'm so. excited to see it now, man. That, but 100 miles an hour, I really think like, I mean, we hit 75 with Big Bertha and that's only with a like a Predator 420. Yeah. I mean, that was 30, maybe, maybe 30 horsepower. So 140 horsepower, this thing's gonna, I mean, I'm, I, I plan on burning some tires. Like yeah. that's the goal, to burn some tires. And I mean, yeah, I think if we build it right, I think we could hit 100 on it. Heck yeah, that's what I'm all about. That's what that's I a little, It feels a little safer. It's just because you're on four wheels? On four wheels, yeah. Yeah, I can just... But though, if you get, start darting around and get flipped over, I don't know, you'll be all right. It'll I'll be, be fine. fine. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be fine. Wear a helmet. <laughs> wear a helmet. Wear a helmet. Wear a helmet. If you take anything Any away from this episode. Best advice ever, wear a helmet. There we go. That's right. And on that note, I want to tell you thank you so much for coming out. Of course. Thanks for hanging out, coming all the way out to Texas to pay to hang out. Are you going to come out and hang out with us anymore? Yes. Like... Um, we have Go Power Sports 180. We have a race. We have a pool start picnic. Pool start picnic. You're coming uh, to that? Yeah. I'm not 100% sure. You plans better. Yet. I'll get you a hotel room if you need one. <laughs> okay, I'll check my schedule. Okay. I'll check my schedule. I do want to come. I do want to come. So if I can come, I will be there. I would yes. love to come. I have some things that I need to get done. So we'll understood. Yeah, yeah, you got go kart plans to get out there, and we got collaborations to hopefully do uh, in yeah. the future. But thank you for coming out. Of course. And everyone, be sure to look up Go Kart God on Instagram, YouTube. Also look. Look out, go kart gang, go kart goddess. goddess. When those things come out, right now it's gonna be just go kart god. But by the time this comes out, you'll have that ready. Yeah. Okay. We already have T-shirts. They will be on the website if you guys want women's go kart related co like stuff. We have crop tops, crop hoodies. We even got a cool snapback. We got a hoodie and a, another T-shirt for the go kart goddess stuff. You can order that on there. We're coming out with a new windbreaker. Nice. We even have a, a duffel bag for Go Kart God. There you oh, go. Uh, nice. So we got lots of stuff, but we plan on doing a lot of merch as well this year. We have some really cool ideas, doing collaborations, so maybe we can do a merch collaboration. Heck yeah, I'm always down. Um, hey, what's that phone number for everybody? <laughs> If you want to call us, it's 480-955-CART. <laughs> awesome. So, so thank you so much, Eric. Yep. Thanks for hanging out. And everybody, I want to make sure you guys, if you have any comments, make sure to leave them down below this video. And as always, like, subscribe, and ride on.